Hi and welcome back to a new video. I almost recovered from Rona. It's like 90%. I still have a bit of a cold, but I'm getting through it. It's like 90% over and I didn't have a lot of time to prepare like a long video because I'm still like recovering a bit. But there are some things we have to discuss because there is an upcoming overclocking competition, which you definitely want to participate in. Once this video is going to be live, it will also be live for the competition, so you can already participate. We will talk about some things, why these competitions are important and what exactly is going on. This video is supported by Team Group. Team Group would like to invite you to check out their digital expo where they are hosting a giveaway to win DDR5 memory and an AIO because Team Group just announced some very interesting products in their recent expo. Delta RGB DDR5 memory modules with up to 6400 MHz frequency, PCI Express Gen 5 SSDs with up to 13,000 MB per second read speed and 4 TB capacity, and a very special Siren AIO, which allows not only to cool your CPU, but at the same time also your M.2 drive. To participate in the giveaway, make sure to check out the link in the description and answer some simple questions at the Digital Expo. Good luck there and now let's continue with the video. Most of you might be already familiar with this, but about one and a half years ago, I acquired HWBot together with my business partner from Thermal Grizzly. We put it in a separate business, it's the HWBot Limited, because we want to keep it completely separate from everything. Originally, I mean, it was not my intention to buy the website or anything like that, but about two or like three years ago, the previous owner started to struggle with HWBot, like financially a bit because he was also running different businesses, but especially also time-wise. And then after it was clear that he was trying to sell the website, we kind of like rescued the site. Basically, you don't want this site to go in the hands of like Asus, even though I love you guys, but you know how it would end up if a manufacturer would have his hands in there, it would not be independent, so it would be a bit of a problem. In that meantime, we worked on a lot of different things, uh, trying to get the website on different servers, which is something we're working on right now. So we will transition to Hetzner very soon. Previously, or right now, the servers are running on Amazon, which is fine, but for what you're paying, the performance is really, really bad. And in September, they will shut down the data center where we are hosted right now. And then I thought about, I mean, Hetzner is a great partner for me. So I reached out to them and asked for a potential partnership and they agreed, which is amazing. So they gave us one year of servers for hosting on HWBot. So thank you very much to Hetzner for supporting the overclocking community this way. Talking about supporting the overclocking community. So over the previous time, we also, obviously we were doing some changes to the website. We hired two coders, which are working on it to improve it and also to keep it running, which costs money. So we had to look for new sponsors. Corsair was straight on board, same as G Skill and also Intel, which is amazing. And especially with Intel, because they're a big company and they are a bit easier to deal with when it comes to bigger budgets and also their mindset. Their mindset is amazing. That's why I quickly want to talk about the Intel Masters of 12th Gen Challenge, which is th something that's going to start from today. It's an extreme overclocking competition featuring 12900K or 12900KS. Those are the hardware limitations to join. And Intel gave us almost 30,000 US dollar in prices for this competition which is just completely insane and I'm very thankful for that. The winner alone will already get 10k, so that's, that's just completely insane. And then when we did the competition where we were thinking about the individual stages, we also reached out to Intel and said, so what about non-k overclocking? Because I personally found it quite entertaining to not only have like 1200k in there, but maybe also a bit of non-k overclocking, like a G7400 Pentium, for example. And they agreed which is just amazing. It shows their mindset and their thinking towards overclocking and I'm very thankful for that. Now I know that extreme overclocking might be irrelevant for most of you guys out there. It's still very important and we will get to that in a bit, but there is a second competition I want to talk about and that is going to be very important to me and also going to be very interesting to you guys because that is the Intel Open Overclocking Championship 2022. And the focus is on the word open. Because, and I think we have to applaud to Intel in this regard, because it is open to everyone. Even if you have a Ryzen 5950X in your rig, you can participate in there. And that is something completely new, and I have to give huge respect to Intel 
for doing this competition. Because previously, let's say we had an MSI competition or we had like an ASUS competition, it was always limited to like an ASUS motherboard or like an MSI motherboard. They were always limited to the specific vendor. But Intel said they want to promote overclocking as a thing, like to educate people to get them into this hobby, which I think is absolutely amazing. So the only limitation this competition has is the cooling method. No extreme cooling is allowed to make entrance a lot easier. So the only cooling methods that are allowed is normal air cooling. Cooling, AIO cooling or custom water cooling. For this competition we also have almost 10k US dollar in prize money whereas 2.5k already go for the first place and we reward the entire top 10. And what is also really really nice is that we got 7 12900k CPUs. I want to point out that those are trace CPUs. This is just for showing that it's a 12900K. So the CPUs we're going to give away are Trace CPUs, seven of them in total, to participants. So if you participate in the competition in all three stages, then you have a very good chance winning one 12900K CPU. So that is already worth participating itself, apart from the fact that you can learn a lot there. This competition will also be made up from three stages. The first stage is going to be CPU-Z frequency validation, which means that the highest CPU frequency will win. And now you might think that apart from a 12900KS, you will not have a chance of participating. But I can tell you there are a lot of interesting CPUs for participating in this stage. For example, a 2600K Sandy Bridge CPU. A lot of these CPUs easily did like 5.4, 5.5 gigahertz on water cooling. So yeah, if you dig through the HWBot database, there are certainly some interesting CPUs as alternative for participation. The participation is pretty simple. First of all, you make your HWBot account, you register or log in. Then you go to competitions, Intel Open Overclocking Championship. There you have all the three different stages. Stage one as already announced, CPU-Z frequency. Stage two and three will later be announced. First of all, we go to the CPU-Z frequency stage. And here you can already find a short set of rules, but if you want to find the full set of rules, you click on this link, which will open up the OC Esports page. It's like an additional page, which gives a lot more details to all the rules. You can read through them. And if you want to participate, you can simply click on submit score, where you can enter your score details, which we obviously have to do first. For this, first of all, download the competition background, which you can do here and set it as background on your system. So we know that you're just making these scores right now. Next step would be downloading CPU-Z in the latest version. That's version 2.01. And after you did that, there are some tricks you can already do. So you open the directory of CPU-Z where you can find the config file of CPU-Z and there you can set XOC mode enabled and also do like check update zero for CPU-C to open a bit quicker. And then right click, you can tweak your system the way you want. You can run only one core, you can run eight core, you can disable SMT, whatever. And by right clicking and selecting the core, you're selecting also the core you're validating. So for example, if you press core number one and then you press F7 on your keyboard, then you will create a validation file on the left which in my case is 5129 megahertz. One more thing we still have to do is take a screenshot for this. You just simply leave open the CPU-Z tab and press print screen on your keyboard. Open this up, for example, in paint, but don't crop it. Like no modification whatsoever on this. Everything has to be visible, including the taskbar. And you save this as a screenshot. And then we're going to valid.x86.fr. So that's basically the CPU-Z validation website. And here you also create another account. After you're logged in, you scroll down and you go to manual validation form. And then you select your CPU-Z file, the one which we just created, and upload it. So now we are ready to submit. You go to submit score on the HWBot competition page. And then we scroll down to enter hardware manually. For example, the 12900K right here in the normal configuration, not 8P. You enter your frequency right here, which you can basically just copy from the CPU-Z validator. You enter it right here. You also enter it on the benchmark score. Add your cooling, which is AIO water in my case. Rest of the fields you can add, like the main board, your VGA, whatever, but those are not mandatory. You select the screenshot and then you also copy the verification link down there. And the last thing you can do is add a comment and also mandatory, add an image of your system. Now you can click on I have read and agreed to the rules 
might as well also read them before you submit the submission and then submit benchmark result. Why do we even host overclocking competitions? To me and also to a lot of other people in this industry, extreme overclocking was a good way to step into industry in the first place and also it's a very interesting way of learning things about hardware. It's a very difficult and also very expensive way of doing it, but in the end, if you're successful in the extreme overclocking scene, like if you stay in the top 10 for a longer time period, it will require that you learn a lot about hardware, not only like dragging some sliders, but also doing the cooling methods, also a lot of like deep level hardware moddings and stuff. So it's a very, very nice way of educating yourself and also maybe creating a brand around you to step into this hardware industry. And that's why we want to promote the entire ExoC thing a bit more and also encourage new people to participate in the entire overclocking game. Because names out there like Elmore, Nick Shi, High Cookie, Kingpin, Shamino, all those big players in this industry who did a lot of great things for you essentially because they create products like the ASRock OC formula, like an Apex board for ASUS, Kingpin graphics cards, those are products you benefit from. And you can only benefit from them because these people went down the rabbit hole of extreme overclocking. And that's why we have to get new people into this, why we have to promote it, why we have to encourage people to step into the extreme overclocking scene. That's also why I'm very thankful for having Intel on board because they have the exact same mindset, why they want to do things. And if you look at, let's say, for example, Nvidia, they could lock down things further than what, what they're doing. So they're kind of like on a mid-range thing. They don't block overclocking, but uh, they also don't really promote it. On the other hand, you have AMD. They don't do anything right now. It's not up to us. I mean, I would be totally open to also do like an AMD open overclocking challenge. But currently there seems to be no interest at all from their side. And you can also see, I mean, they're locking down high-end graphics cards. Uh, like artificial clock limits, then like low-end graphics cards like the uh, RX 6400, they are entirely locked, you cannot do anything. So it's a bit sad in which direction AMD is going and I hope this might change in the future. I would totally encourage you to also try this because you will see that in the end you're also going to benefit from this. There are uh, two, three more things I want to add. First of all, the giveaway for the CPUs, we decided to only give away four of them to all the participants, like randomly, and three of them will be given away during the competition already to people who are in lead of the competition at a set time. You can find the exact timing and everything, like all the details on the HWBot forum. Link is in the description. I also want to point out that we allow a 50 megahertz deviation of the screenshot and the CPU-Z validation file. So for example, you took your screenshot at 5.5 gigahertz and then you improved your validation file by like 30 megahertz in addition. So you tweaked out a bit more and then it's fine to, to use the same screenshot. I also want to point out that it's highly recommended to have additional verification already on the screenshot like hardware info to display the CPU temperature because we only allow ambient cooling and somebody might think it's a good idea to use dry ice for this maybe and then if you have hardware info for example we can see what the minimum cpu temperature was in that case and i personally would also recommend you that you whenever you take a result a screenshot or whatever at the same time also take out your mobile phone film over your setup film over the screen just to get additional verification to see that the result is legit will save you a lot of discussion especially if you're running your hardware really on the edge I hope you will enjoy this competition and also spread it to your friends because if this is a success we can definitely repeat this again. Intel is very interested in repeating this if it's working out well. So I hope everybody will enjoy the competition. I wish you all the best. Good luck for participation and thank you for your support. See you next time. Bye bye.